I spoke to one yesterday if, uh, in his eyes, you had the next level throws. Saturday, he described the one at the end of the first half when he had Bryce and he had time for a touchdown. What are your thoughts on the next level throws? I know you focus a lot on the, the things that need to be fixed, but when you have a next level throw, how do you process that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think first of all, Bryson, you know, he's, he makes it easy. He's a big target. Um, so I got, you know, I really can't put it in a bad spot for him. Uh, but I figured, you know, 6'6", six, six, uh, history playing basketball, just put it up and kind of, uh, you know, let him go up and get it. Um, other than that, some next level throws, I thought, you know, some were just more generic. Um, I thought Coach Long did a nice job of kind of scheming it up. We had some guys pretty open. Um, maybe a few deep ball, maybe one to Gavin, I think, on the post. Um, I thought it was a uh, pretty good throw. And then I think J.J. went up and made it look like a good throw So uh, on the first deep ball. But other than that, you know, just – Try to put it in the best spot I can for them, and uh, you know that's their job to go up and get it. So. How do you treat trying to learn from good throws and good plays? I mean, again, you fix it on the things that don't work, but how do you learn from the good things? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, no, I think I think just kind of seeing you know how the, how each receiver goes up and get it, just to uh, where they like it and kind of where they're best at getting it. I think Bryson, you know, being a taller guy, he goes up and get it, putting it putting it kind of higher up. Um, but, you know, Coach, Coach Longo always is kind of put it in the box, kind of across the middle and stuff, so we're not overstretching guys and kind of tip balls and stuff. But um, I think sometimes the tight ends, like Bryson, you know, he, may, he likes it up there, and he, um, he, he always tells me to just throw it up and get, he'll go get it. But uh, I think same with J.J. So just kind of knowing your receiver and just kind of, you know, keep building um, that kind of where they like it and just keep making those and after practice and stuff, work on those stuff. So. What's the benefit of having so many options that run back in wide receiver? Yeah, I think the, I think the biggest benefit is just not feeling like forced, you know, to you know to feed one guy. And I think all the guys, you know, they're cheering for each other, and uh, you know, nobody's working on the sideline mad. They're not getting the ball, so I think it also makes it tough, tough on the defense. You know, game plan us. They got you know seven or eight guys that they got to worry about that all can do different things, and they all do them differently, and they, they do them well. So I think it makes it tough on the defense coordinators. What do you think about Cowboys? Yeah, George, no, he's in open field. That's why we got to get him out there in more scenarios. Um, I think that, that one we handed off of power um, and think there's, their boundary safety came down and it was a touchdown. He couldn't tackle George in open field. So we just got, he gets it fast, so we just got to give him more opportunities. Maybe he can even do some more stuff in the pass game. We got some stuff uh, going in uh, for George. So now he, he need to take advantage of his skill set so he, he can make some plays. Yeah, I think uh, I think just trying to you know focus on next week. I think getting uh, getting this going into Atlanta. Um, I think it's Coach, Coach Brown's been saying it's a trap game, so we just got to stay focused um, and uh, just kind of handle handle one week at a time um, before we you know rest up and get by. We can get some guys back and uh, get ready for another game. But I think we got you know focus in on practice this week because uh, like I said, Georgia State. I think. You know, two point return touchdowns for South Carolina, and it was a 21 14 ball game. So they, they got some players, and they got a lot of guys back from last year. So we got to, um, you know, just, just focus in and do our best. But you see this, and you see the praise that you're getting, and that sort of thing. I mean, sometimes I guess it could be the overwhelming time possible. Yeah, I think so. Um, but, you know, Coach Jeremy, I mean, not Jeremy, Coach, but uh, Jeremy's blowing me up a little bit. But I think I'm just trying to embrace it, enjoy it. I mean, because. Um, you know, talking to me, some people hate it, but I think it's a good thing. Talk to me is talking to you, and they're, they're recognizing you. But at the same time, you know, trying to stay humble and just uh, focus on your craft because, you know, they, they love you when you're doing good, and they'll hate you uh, real quick when things go south. So, Drake, is, are Sundays now, I mean, you know, you played football for a long time, but last year, you, you know, Sam pretty much played every play. Are Sundays now when you wake up a little different in terms of maybe some soreness? I mean, you took a couple shots there. And after, but the throw to JJ, I think, he took a shot, and obviously the DJ too. Mm-hmm. Is there? Yeah, that, you wake up? no, 100%. Yeah, I remember Sam. That's why I was saying the biggest thing. He used to say, like, on Sundays, he used to be in bed. Other than over here at the facility, he used to be just laying in bed, recovering. Uh, no, that, that first, yeah, that first throw to JJ got my back hurting a little bit, but, you know, getting there, getting treatment, I'll be all right. Um, yeah, for some reason, my hamstrings are pretty tight, which I don't even know why. I think, uh, I need to run some more sprints after practice because I was, I was pretty tired out there. I think I probably saw. So just uh, doing more for my body because, you know, my body's no weapon. So I just got to take care of it more. You have any standout moments from the App State game or any players that may have stood out to you or surprised you a bit during that game? Uh, hmm, that's, good, that's a good question. I think uh, Caleb Hood's long run, uh, I think right guard, I, was, I think that was William coming around on the, on the, on the power play. I think that, that kind of 
kind of settled us down uh, that long run. I think he could have scored. Um, you know, every time in high school we played Richmond County twice, he was he, we were catching him in high school. So I don't know, uh, Caleb. I think he ended up pulling something on that run or something. But uh, I think Austin Richard has been uh, doing a great job with left tackle. You know, left tackle's one of the toughest spots, and kind of up front they go unnoticed. Um, but you know, Austin, you know, he comes in every day, he works, he doesn't complain, and he puts on a smile. And uh, Austin is uh, kind of backbone on that left side. So uh, him and Ed, you know, steady Eddie, as Corey Gander calls him. You know, them, they're making some plays, and o lines doing, doing a nice job. Three sacks, I think I could have done a better job by not taking those, but I think it was only for nine yards, so not that big a deal. Drake, what to you has been the key to the success in red zone offense so far? Um, mm, I think running ball first and foremost. Uh, knowing the defense, you know, how to stop the run. We've got some, some good backs for making plays. I think, you know, of course, as long as we've put in some wrestling and stuff, uh, you know, moving me outside of the pocket, I think down the red zone, I think that's where, you know, I'm best. I can make the plays, running and uh, throwing. But also, I think we know the tight ends make it easy. You know, we've got three weapons down there they ought to worry about. Uh, and I think we've proven that. Um, and obviously, Nesbitt makes it easy down there, just, just having him in big body. That's like that, that last two minutes, so. I think you guys scored eight touchdowns and seven different guys scored the touchdowns. Wow. Um, if I'm right about that, I might be wrong about that. I don't know. Um, that's right. Scored seven. <clears throat> that was only eight touchdowns? Yes, seven touchdowns. I'm sorry, Ross. Let me speed it up. Um, <laughs> I think seven different guys scored touchdowns. Obviously, you, you, you hit what? Against Spain, you had ten different receivers you hit. Yeah. I mean, for lack of a better term, is it just, do you find it fun just to spread the ball around and get it? You know, a lot of different guys involved. Is that just enjoyable as oh. the quarterback and the leader of the offense? Oh, no doubt. I think, you know, getting everybody involved, and everybody's always, you know, the whole team's happier. I think, you know, we're doing uh, a good job creating depth. That's, that's one of the big points last year. I feel like, you know, we kind of had the, kind of some front-runner guys, and, you know, um, after that we kind of dropped off a little bit. But I think, you know, credit to, you know, Kobe and the young receivers and, uh, you know, the freshman running backs getting in here and, and going to work. Um, I think, uh, you know, like I keep saying, Defensive coordinators are having trouble scheming us because they can't just focus in on one player, especially when Josh and, you know, AG, they're, they're coming back. Um, they're going to have a, a lot under their belt. So, uh, no, we're going to be pretty scary. So. As the, the, those two receivers just talked about being out, uh, once they get back, the young guys are taking their spot. Can that one go low for the future? Do those guys should be not depend on those guys? Oh, 100%. That's what, they, you know, Coach Longo keeps, keeps preaching. Um, they got, uh, you know, Gavin and JJ, they're getting some big-time ball game reps. Um, you know, AG comes back and Josh, you know, play inside and outside. Uh, it just creates, you know, that, that, that more depth. And um, I think JJ and Gabo, they've been a little tired out there, they'll tell you. Um, they've been a little tired, so maybe 60 or 70 plays, maybe a lot for them. But even rotating them out, getting 30 or 40 each plays, 100%, that, uh, you know, full speed, they'll, they'll be tough to handle. Yeah, I think, you know, there's always stuff to work on. Um, like I said, I mentioned those sacks earlier. And then uh, after State brought some of the, you know, the all-out blitz, cover zero stuff. Um, I thought, you know, I missed Kamari open one time down the seam. Um, I thought we, you know, we ended up handling it nice on the DJ touchdown. Uh, they let the back loose. But, you know, we worked on that Sunday. And then, um, you know, some stuff, some decision making I made uh, on some, some RPO stuff. But, you know, just got to, you know, kind of be uh, – Kind of diligent and uh, give them the small stuff because I mean, uh, sorry, uh, but just kind of look at the small stuff and just try to get bigger every each week. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, struggle with that question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one one of the things coming out of AMU you guys talked about was maybe improving your footwork a little bit. You thought you might have been kind of a little jittery or mm -hmm. just watching the game Saturday. I think some of us felt like. Yeah, it looked like you could see a difference, like you were kind of sliding in the pocket as opposed to, like, did you, was that something you thought you were able to improve on, like the footwork aspect of it, and there were a few subtle little moves just to stay in the pocket? Yes, the sir. Better. Yeah, no doubt. I think I actually did do a better job, a little better job. Sometimes, you know, I think, I think last, last week against FAMU, maybe was, but like five or six times, I think maybe against AFME maybe once or twice. Um, so just keep getting better at that, and, you know, honestly, some throws, um, I think drifting towards it, you know, helps, like that touchdown uh, to J.J., you know, drifting left a little bit. 